All right, this video come about because I got a subscriber that's got a problem. And one of the things we used to do, his name is uh, Medic8890, I believe is his deal. And uh, what happens sometimes, he just changed the pan gasket, says he uses the same fluid. And it doesn't take much. You know, all it takes is disturbing the system, really. And you can run into problems. So what happened is his pan gasket was leaking. He changed, or the shop changed the pan gasket. And now it got to where it, he said it was slipping. Um, people's definition of slipping means different things to different people. Um, I have a feeling that it was started shifting later and later and that, that's what they, that's what a lot of people describe as slipping. That's not actual slipping, that's just a, a late shift. Um, and then what happened was it eventually got to where, uh, already getting interrupted, I'll be back. Okay, uh, where was I? So, um, I think it, it just quit shifting all together. And so what you, we're going to go out to the vehicle and I'll show you a couple things that you can do. And some of the other things that'll work is, uh, the little bumps that are in uh, the lanes for dividing them and letting you know you're, you're veering out of the lane. You don't want to get too big of ones cause you don't want to screw your tires up, but you do want you know, fair, fair size of them. The bigger, the better. Don't go too big, but it uh, shakes the vehicle enough that it usually it'll, uh, a lot of times it'll free up the valve you know, or the governor. <clears throat> and uh, another thing that works is the little uh, rumble strips that are on the side of the road. Those work pretty good. The thing that uh, works really well is if you got a gravel road, you can travel down that thing and that, that works really well but if that doesn't work i'm going to show you a couple things that you can do uh, the second thing i'm going to show you that you can do is for governors mostly it does do some for the throttle valves but it's mostly for governors and <clears throat> i don't recommend that you do this i'm not saying to do this i'm going to keep harping on this you do this at your own risk if anything gets destroyed, you have a wreck. I accept no responsibility. I'm telling you, yeah, you do it at your own risk. Uh, but it does work. It's something we used to do, and um, you just you're going to take a risk doing it. So you want to make sure you're going fast enough, uh, at probably at least 30 miles an hour, maybe faster depends on how your park system, you know, how big the lugs were on your park deal. And um, don't want to have a shift lock mechanism on your shifter. Uh, by the time that they started coming out with shift lock mechanisms, they were doing away with governors and, and throttle valves, but there are systems that do have the shift lock on it. You do not want to do this with the shift lock me mechanism on your shifter. Uh, usually what happens is even though you're pushing on a brake, it will not come back out of park. So it's not going to immediately go into park, but once you reach a slow enough speed, it's going to. And you really run the risk of breaking stuff and you run the risk of having a, a wreck. Uh, so it's extremely dangerous. Uh, do it at your own risk. So uh, we're going to go out to the vehicle and I'm going to show you a couple things that you can do. Okay, so some of the other things that we can talk about are uh, modulators. Uh, I've had people argue with me and you can argue all you want to, but this is the way it's supposed to be. The vacuum for a modulator needs to come directly off the manifold, the intake manifold. 
It doesn't need anything else attached to it. It doesn't need to be attached to the bottom of the carburetor. The only time that uh, that really occurred was in your 4T60Es and it went into the throttle body but there again it wasn't acting off of the throttle body itself it was really more like manifold vacuum um, that's the only time that I can I can remember there being that issue where it, it did go into the throttle body but trust me it does not work the same as what you're using your carburetor for it doesn't need to be going into the carburetor it needs to go directly into the intake manifold you need to have it's supposed to be about 17 inch pounds of vacuum uh, of vacuum and that's on a really good engine now everybody knows that once these engines get some miles on them they're not going to have that high vacuum you got to have at least 10 you start getting down around 10 and 8 you're going to have problems it's not going to work right you're going to start burning your tranny up it's not going to shift properly so you need to uh, have as much vacuum as you can one of the things that can affect vacuum is the timing of the engine now I used to know a guy back in the day he never used a timing light he timed it with vacuum and I've done it it works uh, so you need to make sure your vacuum is right uh, you need to make sure your cables are set right before you begin any of this stuff uh, throttle valve cables especially um, you need to make sure that they are adjusted properly that they got the right angles there's more to it than, than you think there are as a lot of these people are putting transmissions in vehicles that never had like a, a 700 r4 for example you're getting a lot of old uh, vehicles that they're swapping out the transmissions that were in there and putting 700s in them uh, a lot of people are putting 4L60Es now, which eliminates all that, but a lot of people are putting 700R4s in there, and I think that you can just throw a bracket on it, and you hook a cable up to it, and everything's going to be hunky-dory. Let me tell you, you can run into a lot of problems. You wonder why you keep burning up the transmissions. You wonder why you can't get the shift points right. You wonder why when you push it full throttle, it pulls the cable out. That's all because you got the wrong angles, you got the wrong levers on it, and you can't just throw that stuff together and stick it on there and think it's going to work. There's a lot more to it than you think there is. Um, I think that that's about it for this one. Uh, we're going to go out to the vehicle. I'm going to show you what to do to the gas pedal. I mean, when you stomp on this gas pedal, you want to act like it's a zombie and you're going to stomp its brains out. You're going to have to get violent with this thing. You can't just pussyfoot around about it uh, or it's it does not work. So we'll go out to the vehicle, show you what to do. The second part of it, you do at your own risk. Okay, the first thing that we're going to talk about here, and I don't know how well this is showing up on the camera. It doesn't seem to like it might be too well. Uh, let me see if I can get a brighter light on this situation. All right, seems to be better if it would stay on. Yeah, this is one reason I don't like stream lights, but <clears throat> it's what I got to work with right now. Okay, uh, we're talking about old throttle valves and systems that had throttle cables and throttle valves. They would get stuck with the littlest bit of debris. And uh, that may be muffled because of I had to hand over the microphone. See if this is better. 
So old systems with uh, throttle valves and throttle cables, throttle valves that get stuck, and you don't want to have to, especially on a front wheel drive, you don't want to have to pull that cover and the valve body back off. What you could do a lot of times is you, know, you see the gas pedal down there, shut your vehicle off, and you're going to stomp on this gas pedal like you want to put it through the floorboard. So just stop, turn it off. I mean, really get violent with it. Do that, take off. See if it shifted. If it didn't, you stop. Do it again. And you may have to do it several times. And putting some red lube guard in it could help quite a bit. That was one thing that you could do as far as governors go and somewhat on throttle valves. Now, this is not the uh, vehicle with the right kind of system you I want to stress that this is extremely dangerous and I don't condone you doing it I don't tell you to do it if you want to do it it's you do it at your own risk it is something we used to do you would need to get going depending on the vehicle system you would need to get going uh, really quick at least 30 miles an hour I would say and you do not want to do this on a vehicle that has a shift lock mechanism for your shifter so you're going down the road you're doing at least 30 miles an hour you take your shifter and you go quickly to park and back down do that and several times and what that would do is it would uh, park rod and park pole would ratchet on the uh, hub that it locks into and shake the, the output shaft and it would free up the governor a lot of times not always but enough that you know there's some systems where you just don't want to have to take all that back apart and this would save you a ton of time sometimes like I say uh, you do this at your own risk it is extremely dangerous you do not want to do this when there's any vehicles around you do not want to do this on a system that has a shift lock on the shifter and uh, you want to be extremely careful you want to make sure you're going fast enough uh, if you're doing this on a shift lock system it's going to stay in park until you come to a stop and when you come to a stop or once you get to a low enough speed it's going to go into park and it's going to probably break stuff and it's going to bring your vehicle to a complete stop so it's extremely dangerous I don't you know say to do it unless you just absolutely have to and then you do it at your own risk I do not accept any responsibility for you doing that procedure right there um, all right uh, we'll get in inside and uh, we'll talk about some other things